This is a. I want to thank so much uh, all the legislators for being here today. It's uh, been a bipartisan, cooperative effort uh, by the legislature working with uh, our administration, working with the federal government, and uh, many of the constituent groups uh, who have been supportive of this this program. You know, this is. We're signing today an agreement uh, with the federal government to protect up to 60,000 acres of Minnesota land in 54 counties, which uh, have been de determined to be uh, have water quality challenges. It's entirely voluntary, and it's uh, spearheaded by the direct payments that the federal government and the state government will make to landowners who participate in this program. If all 60,000, if and when they're all subscribed and taking full effect, it will save uh, 19,200 pounds of phosphorus per year. It will uh, reduce nitrogen runoffs by 1,220,000 pounds per year. And reduce uh, sediment runoff by, I had to do this on my calculator, 246 million pounds per year. So it's going to have a huge impact on these counties and on really all of Minnesota. So I, again, thank the, the partners for it. Uh, others can elaborate on the details. I wanted to see if any of the legislators would like to comment since you've been instrumental in this. Senator Hoffman, it's your birthday. You should give his, his, <laughs> say, his, say his something. Thank you, Governor. I, uh, I'd like to spend the next hour talking to you about the importance of what this uh, bipartisan work has meant. And I think this is a great step forward. And, and thank you all for being here to help celebrate this moment in Minnesota when we can say this is important. And it really is important. And so remember to keep that piece in front of you. And thank you, Governor Dayton, for celebrating this moment and this day with us. And we look forward to many more days like this. And thank you, everybody, for doing this. Thank you. We're, we're, I, you might be the first time anybody sung happy birthday to somebody in, in this new rotunda, but we'll straight out. Somebody from the Republican side would like to speak since it's such, such a great bipartisan effort. Senator Weber. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for the invitation to be here. Certainly we are pleased to work with these programs that rely heavily on the, on the volunteer program uh, that for, our, for our individual property owners. I think, too, as we look at this and we look at the opportunity that we have, uh, we must also be aware of, of some of the issues that face us. And I think as we look at uh, having these additional acres planted, as we consider the Palmer Amaranth issue uh, that was discovered in western Minnesota this past season, uh, it also points to the great responsibility we have to guarantee the safety of the seed supply that is coming into Minnesota and to ensure that as we work to eradicate Palmer amaranth on one hand, we are not planting it in new locations on the other hand. And so I look forward to being able to work with my fellow members of the legislature, the governor, the department, as we work to get that problem under control so that indeed these acres are everything that we want them to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyway, any anyone else? Any other? Senator Davis, you? It's my pleasure to be here today, and it's a great give all the praise in the world to you, Governor, for getting this done. This is something we need to take care of. The many people are going to suffer from losing acres of land they can put in crep now that would have been in a buffer bill. And I think this is a great start, and I hope we can continue to finish it. And this is a show that there's bipartisanship ship, ship in the House. We were both on the Sard Sams when we gave $50 million worth of rim land. And we did it together, and I'm, we're glad that this is a big brother to the, what we did. Very good. Thank you, uh, Representative Gunther. And we did work together, and I, I think it's important to look around at the coalition that's here, uh, Governor, that it's important that we have people who don't always agree on everything, agree on this thing, uh, who can agree that it's easy to take $350 million uh, from the federal government, but we also can put it in the ground in Minnesota. The soil and water conservation districts have a track record of implementation, and that's why we get 
the dollars we get in Minnesota because we can get the job done. And we get the job done with everybody who's in this room. So I want to make a specific appeal, we talk about farms, but to landowners, to maybe folks who aren't on the farm but own the land, and they remember what the land was like when they were a kid. They remember the bees and the butterflies and the muskrats. Uh, they remember the wildlife that was there. They remember the joy in growing up. And they have an ab ability by going into CREP to save that for their children and their children's children. So they can leave a legacy voluntarily working together with our local elected officials, local soil and water districts to implement these practices and leave a lasting gift to Minnesota that this $350 million can match. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Uh, any other legislators? So then uh, let me turn it over to John Jasky, the executive director of Bowser, who's been one of the driving forces behind this on behalf of the state agencies. Uh, John Jasky, Executive Director, of Board of Water and Soil Resources. As the governor said, this has been in the works for a couple of years, and we want to acknowledge the huge commitment the federal government's making to this state. Uh, and doing that because this state is ready to do this kind of work. We're ready to take action on improving our water quality. We've invested in the science, and this is about taking action to show what can be done, as has been described, with voluntary participation by landowners. That's where this is all going to begin, and that's where it's going to be successful. Uh, the Soil and Water Conservation Districts in every county are ready to do this. Uh, we are going to see, as the governor described, water quality improvements. They won't happen the first day, the first week, the first year, but over time those will accrue, and there will be lasting permanent conservation on the landscape. The CREP will have three specific practices that we're going to be pursuing. Uh, one of them is, in fact, the buffer practice or a filter strip practice, and about half of the acres will be aimed at that specific practice. The other parts of this will be protecting municipal wellhead areas by looking at the vulnerable geology where wellheads are going to take water from the surface and ultimately get it to consumers uh, through their faucets and their water drinking systems. We're also going to be looking at wetland restorations, which are a critical part of holding water and treating water on the landscape, as well as providing a habitat benefits as well. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Commissioner Tom Landwer or Dave Fredrickson. Who's coming next? Dave, you're next. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and thank you, John. Uh, if there was ever anyone who was a... Uh, a ankle-biting uh, dog on this issue, uh, it has been uh, John Jasky. Uh, every time I suggested making a call to Washington, D.C. on some issue, he would say, don't forget to lobby on behalf of the CREP ASK. And so thank you to all of you that have stepped up. Thank you to all who have stepped up individually and collectively. I see many of you uh, here today. Again, this is an opportunity of, um, it's a volunteer opportunity. It's just another option for farmers to utilize, and I would encourage uh, farmers to take a strong look at this. And I can't help but mention Ag Water Quality Certification, as long as we're here talking about good programs. It's, an, again, another example of the federal government, and thanks to the efforts of Governor Dayton, the opportunity for us to work in partnership uh, with the federal government. Uh, we have a classic example uh, in the form of Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification where we partnered with NRCS uh, to make this program a reality and now we have again another example of uh, working together with our uh, colleagues at USDA. So congratulations to all of you and thanks all for your hard work. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Landwehr. I'm the Commissioner of the Department of Natural Resources. And I just want to say, you know, this is an amazing day. This is an outstanding day for conservation in Minnesota. 60,000 acres of grassland and wetland. That's almost 100 square miles, for those that don't know the size of an acre. And it's targeted to address those specific challenges we've got, as, some, as other people have already mentioned, in the southwestern part of the state. And this map to my right shows some of those challenges. The blue areas are areas where we've got nitrogen and phosphorus uh, uh, control challenges. The pink areas 
Uh, the areas Dave was just mentioning, those are the uh, water quality certification uh, pilot areas. The um, crosshatch areas are areas where we've got groundwater challenges. And so this program is going to target those acres to do the most good. We're going to get a lot of benefits out of them, but we're going to get those specific targeted benefits as well. And those yellow lines that you see on there, those are part of what we call the prairie plan. It identifies where we've got native prairie left in the state of Minnesota. Less than 1% of the native prairie is still out here. This is going to help supplement those acres. Getting grass in, on the ground is critical for things like pheasants, for ducks, for bobolinks, for monarchs, for pollinators, all kinds of things in addition to the clean water benefits that John mentioned. And this is all part of the governor's uh, uh, plan uh, through the, uh, the pheasant action plan to put more grass and wetlands on the landscape in order to boost those pheasant populations. All of these benefits are going to be accruing to people over the next few years, but because of the nature of this program, these benefits are going to be there for generations. We will see benefits coming off of this CREP program uh, for as long as uh, Minnesotans are out there enjoying the countryside. Thank you to the landowners who are going to participate. Thank you to the agencies who have helped make this possible. Thanks to the legislators who have uh, helped fund this. And uh, on behalf of future generations of Minnesota, thanks to you all. I'm going to call next on the State Executive Director for the Farm Services Agency, Grant Herfindahl. Thank you very much. Today we're here to sign the final draft implementing a Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program, or CREP, agreement. To preface my, preface my remarks, I'd like to say a word of thanks to the very, very many committed staff that have worked so hard to make this signing and agreement possible. Thanks to Governor Dayton for wisdom, vision, leadership, and commitment in pursuing the CREP proposal, focusing on making progress toward state and national water quality goals by creating long-term strategic solutions toward voluntary program participation by the planting of buffer strips, wetland restoration, and wellhead protection. But vision and leadership alone could not make this signing day happen. Countless meetings, conference calls, emails, negotiations between representatives of the state of Minnesota's Board of Water and Resource, Soil Resources Bowser, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Farm Service Agency in Washington. Not to mention, not to mention the support of the Minnesota Legislature, funding and supporting the RIM, or Reinvest in Minnesota program, that's brought us here today. Moreover, as we move forward with CREP implementation, in 54 counties in Minnesota, there will be hundreds, hundreds of dedicated staff from local partners working in partnership in each of these 54 counties. FSA, NRCS, local soil and water conservation district employees, and farm bill technicians. All of these will be working with thousands of farmers and landowners to provide sign-up opportunities and developing conservation plans for putting grass, pollinators, tree, and shrub plantings in exchange for 15 years of annual payments by FSA's CRP program and then the permanent protection of these environmental gains by the purchasing of perpetual easements through the state's RIM program. Lastly, I'd like to give a big shout out to my FSA staff here in St. Paul for whom the task of implementation has just begun. Thanks in advance to Angie, Carrie, Sarah, and Michelle. No question that this agreement is in good hands. Thank you. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Grant. And you, uh, federal government, obviously, 350 million uh, commitment was subject to the state match of 150 million. Is a major partner in this. We couldn't do it without your support. And uh, you know, I signed a letter to uh, Secretary Vilsack to begin this application process on December 2nd of 2015. 
And now we are 14 months later, uh, I get to sign this again. I, I get the easy parts. All of you who are here, uh, representative groups, all of you here, legislators and state agency, federal agency, everyone who's worked together, you're the ones who deserve the credit for this. I hope you take uh, deserved pride in what we've accomplished here. I want to thank particularly the farm organizations. I see Kevin Papp, the director, or the exec, president of the Minnesota Farm Bureau. I don't know, David, you can help me with others who are here. I don't recognize. So, oh, Tom Peterson is here. Where's Tom? Okay. So thank you very much for your uh, organization's support. It's really vitally important to the success of this forum. So at this point, we'll take questions on this subject. The proposal and now the agreement has a 60,000 acre allocation of which about half of that will be allocated for the filter strip practice. So that'd be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 acres over that agreement. As far as the second question, you know, how many buffer areas are needed? Uh, we're still in the process of evaluating that. There was an initial assessment done that was completed early part of January. We're still compiling that from all of the county offices and the soil and water conservation districts who did that inventory. Uh, this is a big piece of it. I'm sorry, the question was, is this a small portion or a significant portion of the total buffer requirement in the state of Minnesota? This is a significant portion. Um, I hate to give you a number because we don't have that inventory yet, but it is, it is significant. I, once we have the inventory completed, we can give you more detail. Well, as, uh, as, as Grant also indicated and, uh, and Commissioner Fredrickson, the, the first thing is having landowners want to do this on the parcels of their land that are most environmentally sensitive. That's an eligibility criteria. So we're just taking the area that's needed, not anymore. The way it works is they sign a contract with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and then a conservation easement is done at the same time or about in parallel the state of Minnesota. And they get, a, they get a payment that's based on a joint payment rate that we will provide to every one of the landowners. It's based on the township value of land in that county and some other things. We will also pay for the seeding of the native plants that will go on that land so that it's taken care of well and is going to last without much maintenance. That will also be covered in the program. Yes, and that seating will be done by local contractors and people who are experts in doing that work. And as Senator Weber you know, reminded us, we've got to make sure we get the good seed in the ground, not the stuff that's got a problem. Uh, the question is, will this uh, allow for those areas that are required to have a buffer, will this program help with that? And the short answer is yes, and there's some details that I can get you later, but the answer is yes. The question was, how does the $350 million allocation to Minnesota, in this case, compare to other states? And Grant might have to help me if he knows. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm focused on Minnesota, as Fredrick, Commissioner Fredrickson said. You know, we're, we're advocates for Minnesota. But this is, I'm sure, one of the largest ones probably ever in terms of the total dollar amount. Uh, again, that's only possible because Minnesota has its own resources to bring to match that. And that has come from a variety of sources. Um, the legislature has appropriated money. We'll be asking for more to complete that commitment. Uh, there are several requests. Um, again, the funding sources are, I'm sorry to repeat the question. The question was, um, what is the request to the legislature in 2017 to fulfill a state commitment? Uh, the agreement is a, five to ten year agreement so we have a little bit of time we have to get most of the money though at the beginning so they can allocate the federal dollars and so we have requests in through the outdoor heritage council for funding through the clean water fund via the clean water council and the governor's recommendations 
And also the governor has put forth a $30 million bonding request for this purpose. Commissioner Stein, do you want to comment on that? So the question was, how does this help for the cities that are impacted uh, by, by clean water initiatives? Uh, this, uh, my name is John Stein, the Commissioner of the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. First of all, the governor has $167 million in his bonding request to assist uh, community water system, both uh, wastewater systems and drinking water systems that are aging and need uh, uh, improvement and uh, upgrades. The other uh, part of your question is, how does how does conservation on the land offset impacts in municipalities? Both are needed for water quality benefits. So they really, uh, it's, it's necessary that we do both actions, put our working lands into conservation practices at strategic locations, like you'll see on the map to my right, uh, and, and also then target our efforts to communities that have the, uh, some of the most uh, concerning uh, wastewater and drinking water needs. So one thing I did not mention is when you look at that part of the state, those 54 counties, less than 5% of that is public land. So it is 95, it is majority private land. And, and um, uh, much of the original habitat that was there, 99% of the prairie uh, grasslands and wetlands that were there are no longer there. So uh, when I think of the conservation challenges facing the state, things like pheasants and ducks and bobolinks and meadowlarks and pollinators are the ones that are uh, suffering as a result of a lack of habitat. So this will help, you know, 60,000 acres, again, 100 square miles of habitat that's going to be a nice mix of prairie grasses and forbs and uh, managed for uh, managed as wildlife habitat. So it helps a lot uh, directly by providing nesting habitat, feeding habitat, breeding habitat. But then the ancillary benefit to fish is that some of these lands will be, as John mentioned, they'll be uh, uh, wetlands, so they'll be filtering water, uh, uh, by virtue of, uh, of that function. And there, some of it may be on erodible land, so you'll have less sediment running into the, the water systems, whether it's a buffer or just a hillside. So by virtue of cleaning up the water, we also improve the fisheries. So it is really a fish and wildlife and insect uh, and plant program uh, uh, all across that part of the state. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Uh, you guys had your chance to be this morning. I don't know if there's anything else imperative, but thank you all very much again for participating. There's a reception where in the vault. In the vault, I was sold. I don't know where the. I haven't been around this place yet. So you will be able to leave on a time basis. Uh, thank you very much again.